In this tutorial I'm going to show you the progress bar feature of Moodle and I'm particularly going to pay attention to how it can be used to track student participation. So I'm going to introduce you the progress bar itself. I'll show you how you can add it to your course if it doesn't exist or configure it if it does. I'm going to show you the best options when you're configuring it in order to track student participation and I'll also show you the student experience. At the end of that I'll show you how you can then as a teacher visualize how your students have been participating in your course. Okay so here I am I'm logged in as a teacher. Now if it is that you've you've been using the Chisholm template you might already have the progress bar feature enabled in your course and it appears in the right hand column here. If you don't have it there you can easily add it and I'll just quickly demonstrate that by going down to the bottom and then choose from the add a block option the option which is called progress bar. So that will add that functionality in and then the remaining steps are the same as I'm, I'm about to demonstrate. So for me, I already have a progress bar, so I'm going to go in and edit its settings in order to configure it the way that I want it. So I go to um, configure progress bar option block. Now I should pause to mention that what this is actually tracking is anything within your course where you have the activity completion settings turned on. If you uh, watch some of my earlier recordings, particularly that relating to assignments and quizzes, you'll get a sense of what I mean there. So really it's, tr it's tracking anything within your course that can be tracked. So the first thing I need to decide is how this will be displayed to my students. You'll notice that I've got a couple of options here. I'll just show you this one. This is interesting. How do you want the items, the little boxes in the tracking bar ordered. You can either display them in the order that they displayed on the page in the course or alternatively you can do it by the date which that item is expected. So for instance if you've got a series of assignments with due dates it makes sense to display that in the expected by date time option and I'm going to do that for this demonstration just to show you what that looks like. And then I'm going to go down and decide amongst the items that are within my course which items I want tracked and which I do not. So for instance do I want to track the fact that they've read that um, introduction book? If I do I ensure that the setting is yes and I decide what I mean by tracking. So in terms of a book I might expect them just to view it. I don't really need to track the latest news so I'm going to turn that off. I might turn this off as well. So just go down and make choices that are, are relevant for your area depending on what you want tracked and what you don't. So I'm turning some of these off but let me get down to some specifics. So in terms of assignments and particularly in terms of participation the thing which matters is that the student has submitted the work. It doesn't matter so much in terms of participation at least that you have marked that work but the act of submission is the thing which triggers a participation record. So first of all I do want to, to track my assignments. I've got those set to yes and I want to ensure that the activity set here under action is one which simply reads submitted. And I'm going to do that all the way down the page for all of my assignments. I'll also now look to a quiz. So for participation again, the act of a student submitting a quiz is what matters. It doesn't matter so much about what mark they uh, were afforded, but simply that they've attempted and submitted a quiz attempt. So for a quiz, I do want it set to yes. And the action I'm interested in, in tracking here is simply that they've attempted a quiz. Um, I'm just going to go down and set some of these items on and off as appropriate. Scroll to the bottom and hit save changes. So now our block has changed subtly 
there's some red items and green items and blue items. I'll explain each of those in turn, but I'll explain them through the lens of a real student. So I'm going to swap now over to the student view and show you what this progress bar actually does for our students. So the first thing it does is to track that a student has completed a piece of work. Uh, as a student hovers over each of these, you'll notice that below it, it describes the particular item that's being tracked. Items shown in red here show that the student failed to submit, in this case, the assignment by the due date. And so it's a visual marker of their um, tracking and performance. If a student wanted to get more information about that item, they would simply click on, in this case, the red cross, and that they can see indeed that that assignment is overdue by a number of days. So it's a really good tracking mechanism for a student to know how they're traveling and what items they may have missed. I'll finish by swapping back now to the teacher view to see how you can use this to visualize your student performances. So I'm just going to refresh the browser. And this is where the, I guess, the payoff happens, where you get the most value out of um, including the progress bar, because you get to very quickly get an overview of your students. So you can see now, in this case, there's only one student to monitor, but of course it would show all of your students as appropriate. And you get a, basically a visual progress bar of each student. And again, as you saw in my student perspective, I can hover over each one of these to get further information. And if I needed to find out what this particular student submitted for in ex this example is the word basic quiz, I can click on that and drill in to see that attempt. So it's a very powerful tool. What it allows us to do is to, of course, track and manage our student participation. It also helps us to quickly identify students at risk. So you could see students that hadn't participated, that hadn't met submission dates, etc., and, and get in contact with those students to support them.